And today I'm going to be showing you how to make this sweet little striped raglan sweater. The pattern comes in child and adult sizes. And today I'm going to be working on a size 2. And I'm going to use uh, these colors that would be suitable for a little boy. So this sweater pattern is unisex, so it can be worn on girls and boys. And you're going to need two hook sizes, a 4.5 millimeter and also a 4 millimeter hook. And you'll need a yarn needle for weaving. When making garments, it's very important to start off with a gauge swatch. You want to make sure that you adjust your hook size accordingly for the gauge of the pattern. You don't want your sweater or your garment to come out too small or too big. So the gauge in our sweater pattern is 14 stitches and 10 rows. So I've made up a little swatch here. Now when we're working in the round, we won't get the rimmed look of my swatch, but this will still give you a good idea as to your gauge. So now you just want to flatten it out and press your work. I found because I did exactly, it kind of wanted to curl in. So just make sure you press down flat. So I've made 14 stitches. So I started out with a starting chain of 16 and a double crocheted back across the chain so that I had 14 stitches. And see that should be four inches. And then I made 10 rows, which should also be four inches. So that's using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is the larger hook of the pattern. So if you had 15 stitches, you would wanna go up a hook size. If you had 13 stitches, you would wanna go down a hook size. And just adjust your hook accordingly. The yarn I'm using is Mary Maxim Oh My. And this yarn is so soft and it's made with 100% polyester and I'm just gonna get a close-up here so you can see it is so soft and cozy and it is a light three yarn so if you're looking for a comparable but this yarn is very affordable and you can order it um, on Mary Maxim's website there's lots of different colors to choose from I like to use the variegate as my main color which will be the yoke section of the pattern and also for the ribbing i've used the variegates so to start off with our yoke we're going to be using our smaller hook so make a slip knot put that on your hook and we're going to be doing foundation stitches to start off. So for, you're going to want to follow along with your pattern, but for our size two, we'll begin with we'll chain four, one, two, three, four. Now yarn over, we're gonna work back into the chain and you wanna flip your chain and you're gonna see another little loop right in here. So you wanna go through and then you do need to fiddle a little bit. You need to get into that other loop on the back. Once we get going, it's it's not so bad it's just getting under that first one there which is a little tight okay so once you're under both you want to grab your yarn 
pull it up. So now we have three loops on the hook yarn over pulling through the first. So this will be our foundation chain. So put your finger right there so you're sure where to go in the next time. Now yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to finish our double. So I have my finger on that first chain we made. So we're gonna yarn over, we're gonna go down through that chain. And as you can see, there's another loop right there. This time it's easier to work into. You're always going under two, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, stick your finger right there so you know where to go in. And once you're comfortable, you don't need to do that. I just find if you're new to doing these foundation foundations, it helps. Pull through two, pull through two. And I do have a beginner video where I work with the large hook and bulky yarn and it is a little easier to see if you're struggling with the small hook and yarn. So yarn over, my finger's there so I know I'm going through. And as you push through, you should see that other loop right there that you need to go through as well. Just make sure you grab, go through all the strands. It can kind of, as you can see this yarn has a bunch of little fine strands twisted together. So just make sure you get all of them. Pull up a loop. So we're always yarning over, pulling through once for the foundation chain. And then we need to complete our double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, going down under both, pull through one, two, and two. So it does take some patience and a little bit of time to start this off with a foundation, but it really does give us a really nice edge for the start of the yoke. As you can see here, it's much nicer as compared to working into a chain. So I'm going to complete my 60 and then I'll meet you back up to join. Okay, so I have my 60 stitches. So now when you're joining, you want to make sure that you're not twisted. Okay, so you want to find your very first front uh, foundation double crochet. And then you want to go into slip stitch it here to join. And then we'll chain two. And as you can see, we are not, this has to be sewn to join that. You can do that now or you can do that later. You also want to make sure you have enough stretch on your, that would fit over your child size head. So with some stretch, it should fit over a 19 inch to 20 inch head, which is about right for a toddler. So now our next round, we're going to work a front post double crochet in the first. So yarn over, go through the first stitch, and then complete your double crochet. The next stitch we'll do a back post double. So yarn over, we're going in behind pushing down over the post, grabbing our yarn, pulling up a loop, going through two, yarn over, go through two. Our next is a front post, so we go under, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And then a back post, yarn over, 
So we're going in behind, pushing down for that post. Again, the back, so we go in behind. So we're just alternating front posts and back posts all the way around. So I'm going to keep working and I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I'm just about around. You want to make sure that you count all of your stitches. And this here, this one sort of on the angle is my final back post stitch. So we're going to go through. And now I will join up to the top of that first front post double to join. Okay, so now because we're gonna be changing color, I'm just gonna show you actually how we need to do this. Okay, so we will change to our variegated on the final stitch. So this is how we change color. So yarn over, we're going through the stitch pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then we yarn over with the new color, which is our main color. Okay, and then we will join in the top. And then we're gonna chain three. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this color. Okay, so I've changed to my larger hook. I have my chain three, and I'm gonna work a double crochet in the same space as our chain three. So the chain three is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. This is our first corner. And now we'll work one double crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. So work across 11 and then I will meet you back up. And in our next stitch, we'll do a double crochet. chain one and a double crochet back down into the same stitch and this makes the next corner and now we'll work so this is the sleeve section of the raglan and now we'll work the front section so we will work one double crochet in each of the next 17 stitches And in our next stitch, we'll work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet back down into the same stitch. Our next corner, and now we'll work one double crochet in each of the next 11, and this will be for the next sleeve. And in our next stitch, one double, chain one and a double back down into the same stitch and now we'll work one double crochet in the next 17 you should have 17 stitches remaining and this will be the back of our raglan so this should be your 17th And now we're gonna slip stitch into the chain two to join the second chain of the chain three. 
So we've joined and then we're going to slip stitch down into this space to get ready for our next round. And now we'll chain three and work in the same space a double crochet. And now we're going to work a double crochet in each stitch until we get to our next chain one space. So now make sure for this very first stitch here, it can get covered over. You're going into that first one. So there's one, two, three, and 13. And now we're to our chain one space right here. You can see your triangle shape. We'll do one double crochet chain one and one double crochet and again you have to make sure that you sort of push your work that you're going into that first stitch and now we'll work one double crochet in each of the next 19. so i've completed 19 and i'm to my next chain one space and we'll work one double chain one and one double and repeat working 13 in the next and I'm just you just can repeat that around and I'll meet you back up on the other side working around and I've worked across to 17 stitches 18 stitches and we need 19 stitches to complete this so we're going to work into this little space right here so that we can have The total number of stitches that we need and now we will slip stitch into the second chain of the chain three to join slip stitch down into that space and then we'll chain three so this is really going to help to hide our join in that corner and it will go to the back of the raglan okay so round four went up a total of eight stitches so if you count all the way around you should have 72 stitches so now each round will go up eight stitches and we so will be keep increasing exactly the way i've shown you in every chain one space we add a double crochet chain one a double crochet and every section is going up by two stitches as you're counting across from your previous round so i'm going to work through another round with you every round now is going up by eight stitches so we'll work a double crochet in that space And we'll work one double crochet in each stitch across until we reach our next chain one space and that should be 15 stitches our last round our first was 11 13 15 we're going up by two every single round okay so i've worked across 15 and here we are to our chain one space and as we get going with our increased spot here you it will be more noticeable but if you keep counting each section it will help you see where that chain one is so one double chain one one double make sure you push your work to get that first stitch and we'll work one double crochet in each of the next 21 
because we had 17, 19, and now we're going up two more, so 21. So you can just repeat this around. I'll meet you on the other side again to show you how to join up. Okay, so I'm working around and here's my 20th stitch. We know we have to end with 21. So see our little stitch right here. We have to work in to that space for our 21st stitch. And then we will join into the second chain of the chain two. And slip stitch into the space. And chain three. So all we do is keep repeating this, increasing every round by eight stitches. And for our size two, we want to work up to a total of 144 stitches. So now just pause the video and you're going to have to work this. Um, it's going to take you a little bit just to work that up and I'm going to work it up off camera and then we'll meet up for the next section. Okay, so I've worked a total of 13 rounds for my size two pullover. So I have 144 stitches in this round. Now always remember that that final stitch is going right into the small space here. And we're going to change color on our 144th stitch here. So yarn over, pull through two, and now we're bringing in our light blue again, our, our color A, and pull through. And now we'll slip stitch into the second chain of the chain three to join. And chain So now what we're going to do is we're going to work the body section of the cardigan. So if you pinch your corners here, Okay, so there's, I've just marked our sleeves. So these are the sleeve openings. And then this is the body. So what we will do is begin working just around the stitches of the body section. And we'll leave the arms to join back on later. So we're going to double crochet in that first stitch on the other side of the chain one space. So double crochet. And now work a double crochet in every stitch. And when we get over to the other marker, I'll meet you back up again. So I've worked across 39 stitches and here we are to the chain one space and the chain one space here. So we're just skipping over and we're wanting to get that first stitch of the body section. There's one, two, three, Okay, so I've worked across 39 and I'm going to add a final double crochet to bring my stitch count up to 40. And then our chain two is going to count as a stitch. So in total, we'll have 80 stitches for this round. So we'll slip stitch in the top of the chain two. a little tight 
to join. We will have a hole here that will end up seaming at the end. And now we'll chain two and work one double crochet in every stitch around. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and on my 80th stitch, we're gonna change to white. And slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join. And chain two. Okay, so for this round, I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to help us keep our join line straight. Okay, so what we're going to do is a DC two tog across the first two stitches. So yarn over, go through, pulling up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over through three and now work one DC in every stitch around okay so I've worked all the way around and now in our very last stitch we're gonna add two double crochet and on that last stitch we'll drop off the white and we'll just pull up the blue so we're just going to pull the yarn up in behind the whole way along so we won't be cutting or carrying. Now we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join and that chain two counts as a stitch here and throughout. So what we've done, we haven't really increased or decreased any stitches. We've decreased here, increased here, and all that's going to do is help keep our join here straight as we go. I'm just going to show you here what happened with my adult size. As you can see my join, see how it curved off to the side? I'm just, I wasn't happy with that and that's why we're doing this little trick just to help eliminate that. We want to try and keep this join here as straight as possible. But for, so what I'm, I'm going to try out here is that for the white we'll do the decrease increase but for the blue we're just going to continue going all the way around with just one DC in every stitch so one in the first and one DC in every stitch around so I'm going to complete this round I'll meet you back up on the other side and then we'll grab the white Okay, so I'm just completing my last double crochet and we'll drop off the blue, bringing in the white, yarn over, pull through with the white yarn, and slipping, slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join. And chain two. And I'm gonna tog this one because we're back onto white again. Pull through three and then pull through two. And then we'll work a double crochet in every stitch around and add two in the final stitch. And I'm hoping that this is going to give us a better result with our seam. Okay, so we're going to change back to blue. And now for our size two, we're gonna want about 12 rows. So I'll need to do another four rounds of blue and three rounds of white. So I'm gonna continue working my rounds off camera. So remember the blue rounds will just work one double crochet in every stitch around and for all of the white rounds we'll tog the first two and add two to the last. 
Okay, so I've worked up 12 rounds and as you can see, my joint is really straight. I am loving how that's come out. So now what we want to do is change back to the main color, which is our variegated. And I'm just doing that on my last double crochet of the 12th round. And slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join. And chain one and now we're going to just work a single crochet in every stitch around and I'm not going to count that one as a stitch there I'm just going to go down in and do a single and in every stitch around we'll do a single crochet and that's just going to start us up here for the band that we're going to put around the bottom of the sweater. And now I'm going to slip stitch in the top of the first single crochet to join and I'm going to change to my smaller hook. And for our size 2 we're going to chain 9 And work one single crochet, the second chain from the hook, and down our chain. We're going to do a join as you go band. So we should have eight single crochet stitches when we've worked down our chain. There's the last. We're going to skip the first stitch here and we're going to slip stitch into the next and into the next. Turn. And now we're going to work back up, but only in the back loops. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's our first one. We just go down through the center of the stitch. And work only through that back loop only. And it's just a good idea to count as you work up and down the band just to make sure you're not missing a stitch. Now chain one and turn. Now we're working back down in the back loop only. So for the entire band we work in the back loop only. So there's two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. And then we slip stitch in the next stitch along the base, <clears throat> the base round, and then into the next we'll slip stitch again. And then we turn, pulling the yarn back this way, and work up again in the back loops only. So we're just going to repeat this all the way around the bottom of the sweater. So again this is going to take a little bit of time so you're going to want to pause the video and then work away at this off camera and I will do the same thing and then we'll meet up again when that is complete. And then we'll join on to work our sleeves. Okay, so I've worked my band all the way around and I'm gonna show you how to join it. 
So right now I have the little sweater the right side. So rather than turning the whole thing inside out, you want to have your right sides facing to seam it. Okay, so you want to put your right sides facing. Go through the first twice and then just work through the stitch on the one side going through onto the other and just seam that together. Now off camera I already crocheted our one sleeve and now I'll show you how to crochet the other one. Okay, and then you just want to weave your end. Okay, so now to work on our sleeve, you want to have your larger hook and come up here to your stitch markers. So the stitch markers are in the chain one spaces and we're going to work in the stitches around. So this is our front side and then you'll see the back side here. You'll just notice it ridges up a little bit more. I mean, our join is so seamless, but compared to this side, it just sticks up a little bit more. So I'm joining at the back side. So you want to make sure you find that very first stitch. So you can see this is in the chain one space and there's our first. So get your hook in there and we're joining the blue. Same as our rows here, we want to do two rounds of blue and then white, blue, white, blue, etc. So we're going to join with a slip stitch and then we're going to chain two. Now going into the next stitch. and we're counting the chain two as a stitch. We're gonna do double crochets all the way around. So there's two, three, and just count as you go. Okay, so I'm just coming all the way around. I'm at 32 and this will be our 33rd stitch. So 33 stitches. And we're going to slip stitch in the chain two. To join and chain two. And we'll work one double crochet in every stitch around. for a total of 33 stitches. And now you can see we have a big hole here and at the end we will just seam this together. Okay, so I'm just coming around to our 33rd stitch and we're gonna change to white. So I will yarn over with my white. and slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join. And now similar 
we'll chain two similar to our body section we don't want the curve on the sleeve so for every white round this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do our tog so our decrease with the first two stitches and then we increase the final so for every round of white that's what we're gonna do and then the rounds of blue we'll just do our actual decrease to decrease our arm down to the wrist so now double crochet in every stitch around until we get to the last stitch and then we'll add two Okay, so I've worked all the way around. We'll do two double crochet in the final stitch. And on that last double, we wanna switch back to our blue. Slip stitch in the second chain of the chain two to join, chain two, and now we're gonna decrease. So this is where we're actually gonna start decreasing our sleeve size. So we'll go and do a DC tog, decreasing those first two stitches together, and then just work one double crochet in every stitch around. So we're reducing from 33 stitches to 32 stitches. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and we'll change back to our white on that final double crochet. Slip stitch into the top of the chain two to join. Chain two, and now we'll just repeat this white round. So basically um, the white and the blue now we just repeat. So coming over here to our other sleeve, we'll have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white rounds and one, two, three, four, five, six of our blue decrease rounds. But we will do a final decrease on the white here just so we're ending with an even number. So I'll just work through this with you one more time. So we'll do a decrease with those first two stitches. Work all the way around and then add two in the final stitch. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. We'll add one more double crochet in that final stitch and we'll change back to our blue. And slip stitch to join. If I can find the chain there. Okay, so decrease the first two and then just double crochet around. So again, I want you to repeat this until you have a total of seven of your white rounds and now on the final seventh instead of adding that extra double crochet we won't so we'll reduce down one two three four five six we'll reduce down seven so stitches. we'll be ending with a total of 26 stitches around so work through that and i'll work through it off camera and then we'll meet back up to do the cuff Okay, so I'm on to my last round. So I'm just going to work through it with you. So we're going to do a decrease in our first two stitches. And then work one double crochet in every stitch around. So you should end this final round with 26 stitches.
Okay, so this is my 26 stitch and we're gonna change to our main color, which is our variegated. On that final stitch, pull through. And now we'll slip stitch to join. And chain one. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my white yarn. I've already cut the blue and just tucked it inside until we weave. So we still have a fair amount left on each ball. Okay, so I'm just gonna tuck the white in here for now. And our chain one, I'm not gonna count the chain one as a stitch, I'm just gonna do a single crochet right into that first stitch. And I'm just gonna crochet over this tail as I go. So we're just gonna work one single crochet in every stitch around. And you should have 26. Okay, so here's our final stitch. And then we're gonna slip stitch in the top of that first single crochet to join. And just leave that loop there and we'll change to our smaller hook, our four millimeter. And this band will be worked just as we've worked the bottom band, the body. So we'll chain nine And then working back in the second chain from the hook, we'll work um, a total of eight single crochets. So just working a single crochet into every chain and just count as you go to be sure that you have eight. And we wanna have a total of 26 rows when we're working this to equal our number of stitches below. So we skip the first slip stitch into the next and slip stitch into the next and then turn your work and working in the back loop only. So go down through the center of the stitch We'll work a single crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. So you should have eight. I find that um, it's always important to count each row just to make sure that you're not uh, dropping a stitch or adding a stitch. And it also just makes sure you're going into the right spaces. So we'll work the back loop for all of this. So I've chained one and turned, and then we're just working back down in the back loop only. Okay, and so we slip stitch into the base here and slip stitch into the next. Then we turn and work back up along. And you're just gonna keep repeating this all the way around until you have a total of 26 rows.
and I'm just going to com continue chain one and turn. I'm just going to continue doing this off camera and then I'll meet you again. Okay, so as you're coming around, you should have one final stitch to slip stitch into. This will be your 26th row. So we just want to go back up. Okay, so now we're going to fasten off with a tail for seeing that. And if you just want to be sure that you have the right amount of rows, this little ridge here is two rows. So if you count by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, and twenty-six. So now we want right sides facing when we seam it. So I'm not going to pull my whole sweater inside out. I'm just going to fold it up like this because these are the right sides. And then we're just going to seam this just like we did earlier seaming the bottom. So go through and go through and then you just want to go through that first one twice going through every stitch Okay, so I finished this and weaved in my ends. So now we need to finish, just finish off our weaving. So I did most of it as I worked. But as you can see, we've got these ends here to deal with and we need to seam together this so you can choose one of your strands right here the blue is the closest so I'm going to use the blue and I'm just going to get it down to start down here And then you can just weave in this end and then just go ahead and weave all of your loose ends. Always going uh, one way and then back in the opposite direction to make sure it's secured. Final thing I like to do to my pieces is add a garment tag just to personalize the piece and I'm going to add it to the bottom of the sweater. So I'm using my yarn needle and just some of the white yarn.
and I'm just going to knot this to finish and then just weave my ends. And then you can just trim that up. 